The peace, the quiet, the escape from it all. The wildlife that calls this home. The endless miles of canal and river. The special places we all can roam. But hang on a minute. Who looks after it all? These people do. And they need your help. Every winter, across the canal network, you'll find an army of engineers in high-vis and hard hats getting stuck in. But what on earth are they doing? Come and have a look, they said. Welcome to Bridge 233. I'm on the Oxford Canal, built 250 years ago to connect the Coventry coal fields to the River Thames. Along its route, so-called accommodation bridges were built as crossing points. But when the engineers reached Banbury back in the late 1700s, they ran out of cash. So, as a cost-cutting measure, instead of the usual brick construction, they opted to build the bridges out of wood. Essentially, it's a giant seesaw with the weight of the boarded deck perfectly counterbalanced by two hefty balance beams. And the whole thing's hinged by a pair of cast iron toothed pivot racks. So how do you make it work? Couldn't be simpler. That's all it takes. They're called lift bridges because normally lowered, they need lifting to let boats through. Genius. I'm the new work experience. <laughs> you see, people come from all over the world to enjoy our unbelievably brilliant canal network. Engineers are in the process of refurbishing six of these iconic lift bridges. This one is next on the list, but right now the team is beavering away just up the canal under the A34. Here it's less refurb, more resurrection. The timber bridge itself was so rotten it had to be condemned. But the engineers were even more concerned about the walls. There's a big failure behind this wing wall, which is the training wall as you come in towards the bridge. So there's a big void and the ground was sinking behind it. We dewatered the whole section, had an inspection of the foundations. Below water, it's built on a dry stone wall almost. And then as you get to waterline, it's brickwork. The foundation's completely gone. So you've got a situation where, because of propellers churning the water up, as the boats go through, and there'll be a lot of boats come through here through a season, won't there? They're creating enough wash that's essentially washing the foundations out from underneath these walls, which are supporting the bridge. And you didn't have that problem when you were pulling them with horses? Not at all, no. And you've got more boats now than you had in the heyday of the canals, really. So this little bridge has had a very big fix. First, the engineers had to support the dodgy walls to prevent a complete collapse. On the towpath side, they dismantled the old crumbling wall and built a completely new one out of reinforced concrete on fresh, solid foundations. To finish off, they relaid all the brick and stonework. Same historic look, but stronger, safer, and now fit for the future. The near side where the bridge hinges was in much better shape. The original wall has been restored and strengthened, but it's also been modified. More on that later. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is the brand new made from scratch bridge. Too big to deliver down the narrow access track. It's been assembled here on site from a kit of parts. It's solid oak, and the deck alone weighs one and a half tons. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Straight down, steady. It's critical the pivot racks mesh correctly. If one side is one tooth out, the bridge will hinge, skew whiff. Down a bit more for me, like. 
Originally, there were thought to be over 90 of these iconic lift bridges on this stretch of the Oxford. Arguably, they are the defining feature of this canal. They're precious heritage, but today only 21 remain. So that's why so much engineering effort is going in to save them. The reason why these structures are so valued is, is because they are an inherent um, part of the character of the Oxford Canal in its original form in 1805. The Oxford Canal was suddenly exposed to major competition from the Grand Junction Canal and then later on obviously from the railways. So in the 1820s the Oxford Canal was improved with several of the winding parts of the Contour Canal straightened and shortcuts made. With all these modernisation works that happened in the 19th century, these original structures survived and so they are really part of that first generation of the canal. There are historic lift bridges on other canals, but these here on the Oxford are unique. Their simple, functional design has hardly changed in 200 years. If it wasn't for the Canal and River Trust as a charity looking after this operational engineering infrastructure, all of this waterway environment and these wonderful historic assets would be lost. Right, we'd better crack on then. Time to bolt on the balance beams. Get one, Joe. Sammy's going to reposition. Sammy, put four fans on there, mate. So what about that modification I mentioned earlier? Well, it's a mechanical upgrade that'll make this crossing safer and easier to use. Welcome to the wonderful world of lift bridge hydraulics. I love hydraulics. Here, it's what I like to call a single ram retrofit. The body of the ram is mostly hidden, fixed in this newly constructed pit. Its shiny shaft, or piston rod as it's called, pokes through the wall and is bolted to the underside of the bridge deck. A couple of oil-filled hydraulic pipes laid in a trench under the canal connect the ram to a human-powered hand pump on the other side. Simple, but brilliant. So we borrowed a solution that's been used since the 1960s, 1970s. Though it's tried and tested, we know it works. So to open the bridge, the customers will put on their windlass, which they use to operate the lock gearing. So every boat carries one. So you turn it in direction to open it, drives hydraulic fluid through the system, and it opens the ram on the opposite side. And to close it, turn it just in the other way, and it will lower the hydraulic ram back down again, and lower the bridge into position. If you stop turning it, bridge stays where it is. So the hydraulic pump has been made to look the same as all the others we have. So the actual outer box is mimicking other features we have elsewhere on the canal. As soon as you go to a push button operation, you've got the issue of control systems, batteries or power supplies. This system allows us to do what we need to do without making it overly complicated and it's fail safe as well. So why bother going to all this effort? Well, being made of wood, these lift bridges are prone to weight shifts caused by, for example, the weather. For instance, when it rains, the large flat deck soaks up more water and so becomes heavier than the balance beams. And that, to coin a phrase, cocks up the counterbalance, making the bridge harder to lift when pulling the chain and vulnerable to damage when, inevitably, the deck slams back down. The hydraulic ram moves and supports the bridge in a controlled way, no matter where its weight and balance lie. Better for boaters, especially those on their own, and better for the bridge. Less wear and tear. So the biggest challenge for us is to try and find a solution that's cost effective, safe to operate, and also minimises impact. If when we finish the project, customers don't know we've been there and we've done the work, we've done a good job. And that's certainly the case with these six lift bridge overhauls, as I discovered a couple of months ago when I chugged along to check out one of the already upgraded bridges near Banbury. 
And look, as you go through, the work's been done to make sure it looks like it did. Yes, you can see the ram, but... Absolutely, it's maintained the character. It's, it's fabulous, isn't it? You've got the handle, okay? Go yeah, with me. It won't take long, Frankie. It's got hydraulics. It's been upgraded, apparently. 200 years of history mixed with a bit of 21st century engineering and it's job done. That is perfect. Beautiful. Back at Wolvercut, after two winters hard graft, the engineers are clearing up. Their work here is done. Canals are such a familiar part of our towns, cities and countryside, it's all too easy to take them for granted. But this is the simple truth. Without constant hardcore engineering maintenance, sooner or later, the whole 2,000 mile network would fall apart. The Canal and River Trust exist to keep canals alive, but they can't do it without your help. You can take action and make a difference by supporting our work with a gift today. You can easily donate by scanning the QR codes on the screen. Alternatively, text CANALS 8 to 70460 to give £8. Text CANALS 12 to 70460 to give £12. Text CANALS 20 to 70460 to give £20. Your gift today will help us to protect your local waterways for future generations and help canals thrive. Did that swan just go under there without a hard hat on? Right. 